First of all, apologies for looking so rough. I have just got out of bed, wanted to get this video out before we stream tonight, covering a lot of the issues from the weekend. But I wanted to talk about the protests that happened over this weekend, and I was going to do a pre-recorded segment anyway, so here goes. So I went on a protest march yesterday to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. This has been the subject of much discussion within the media, discussion that I've covered on my channel, and it has been frequently referred to as anti-Semitic, as a hate march, as pro-Hamas, and these things could not be further from the truth, from the march that I experienced yesterday. I went down on my own, people said hello to me, everyone was very friendly, I saw people of all different ethnicities, of all different religions, there were black, brown, whites, Jewish, Christian, Muslim, atheists, we saw families with children like you see in the photo that I've got up here, there were the disabled, the elderly, the young, it was of multiple kids with little megaphones, it was honestly adorable. Uh, I kept looking behind me and people watching during the protest just to have a look at the vibrant crowd, all the different people that came along to support a ceasefire, to call to an end of the continual slaughter of Gazan civilians that we're seeing in Palestine right now. And it was a really kind of touching and heartwarming event to go to. Nothing like what it was billed as. When we look at the level of disruption that was had, there was nowhere near the cenotaph, there was no disruption to Armistice Day services, there was nothing of the sort of things that we were being scaremongered about by the Home Secretary or in the right-wing media. None of the things came to pass. There were like two people with placards that are going around Twitter now and two people dressed up in Hamas. But given that half a million people turned out, I think finding four people that you think's done untoward is pretty a pretty good ratio in that regard. Now, it has merged today that were some people who've been detained because they were shooting fireworks. I did call attention to this at the time. I mentioned it on Twitter. But that is a vast, vast, tiny, insignificant minority given the huge scale of the people that turned up. And I was proud to stand there. I was proud to stand with these people. Uh, and I'll be proud to stand with them again for as long as this conflict continues and for as long as our governments give tacit support to the ongoing potential for ethnic cleansing that we see in Gaza by the State of Israel right now. I mentioned Swella Bravman earlier, and she is an important figure in all of this. She riled up a far-right mob of what the media are describing as counter-protesters. But they never actually counter-protested the real march, right? They didn't go there with any kind of alternative thing because they weren't actually counter-protesting. They didn't care, really and truly, about the Israel-Palestine issue. Their main things, first of all, was this idea that they wanted to protect the Cenotaph, which was, of course, nonsense because the Palestine march didn't go anywhere near. There were no Palestine protesters who went to attack the Cenotaph or anything like what was being suggested might happen. But I think they already knew that this wasn't going to happen. This wasn't about Palestine or about Israel, as far as this mob were concerned, right? They were riled up by the Home Secretary in the comments that she made in the Times about the police's approach to protests, saying they're too heavy-handed with the right and somehow let left-wing protests have some kind of pass, when we all saw what happened during Sarah Avrod, so we know that that isn't true. And of course, we now know the kind of behaviour that people get up to when it comes to the far-right mobs during their protests, when really and truly these people were coming for a fight. We know from the police records when they were searched, they were found with knives, found with knuckle dusters, found with batons. These people were itching for a kind of fight, and they didn't care about Israel and Palestine. I don't think they even cared about the Cenotaph. It turns out these people were actually disrupting the two-minute silence, disrupting these British traditions that they apparently care so much about, that they were there to quote-unquote defend. That's not what they were there for. First of all, they were there to be anti-police because of the comments made by the Home Secretary. They were there because they believe that the police, that they believe should be on their side, right? The right always believe that law enforcement is there to essentially deal with people who they believe are on the wrong side to defend them, right? The in-group that must be protected and the out-group that must be controlled. That's how they view the police. And this article that Swella Braverman put up is saying, it is implying the reverse, that they are the out-group and somehow the left is the in-group, when that isn't true. That's just not true. It just depends on the behaviour that people engage in. And the Met have already said 
that the vast majority of the protests that happened in the Palestine march, or the pro-peace march even, were completely peaceful. I mean, plenty of people have been describing this as a family event, for example, despite a minority of people that they're now looking for that are being used and weaponized against the entire march in terms of social media. I cannot begin to stress how frustrated I am at the tiny minority who have undermined it for everybody else, because they are being used and weaponized by idiots on the internet as if it's a broad, as if they're a broader representation of the kind of people who are on the pro-peace march when they do not represent us in the slightest. But of course, first the first thing is anti-police because of the what they believe is being treating them as the out-group rather than the in-group, as opposed to some kind of general principle of policing that should be upheld. I think it's also worth looking at some of the kind of chants these people made. Chants like, you're not English anymore, we want our country back. They didn't hate the march because it was because for Palestine, but it was for peace. They hated it because it was multi-ethnic, it was multi-racial. These people are white supremacists. I have no qualms in describing them as such. They do not want there to be a multi-ethnic British society. And they are angry that people of other ethnicities were marching, and that is it, right? We want our country back is about their feelings of racial supremacy within Britain. I haven't again, I have no qualms in stating that as a fact. They were riled up by Tommy Robinson, somebody who has been flirting, explicitly so, with this kind of rhetoric for a very, very long time. He helped rile these people up. And then what happens, right? As soon as we start getting clashes with the police for these people who we know were prepared for a fight, he flees, he scarpers like the cowardly little rat that he is in a pride cab, no less. But this is what it is. It is people who feel like the multi-ethnic society that we live in right now does not represent the England that they know and love. And these people are a, a tiny minority. We are a very pro-immigrant country. Maybe not pro-immigration when you look at polls, but in terms of countries where people are happy to live near immigrants, we rank pretty highly in Europe. There are problems. I'm not saying there aren't problems. We are broadly a tolerant society in the UK. And I'm proud of that fact. And I'm proud that these people are also a minority. But I'm not proud of the fact that we have home secretaries who embolden this kind of far-right nonsense happening on our streets, claiming they stand for this country when they do not. And this clashes that we see here, these people who turn up with weapons to attack people are the sole, sole responsibility of the Home Secretary and her comments today, and her comments about the failure of multiculturalism, stoking the far right to come out in the way that they have. They ruined remembrance during the armistice, two minutes silence. They had hundreds of arrests compared to very few from the pro-peace protests and the pro-peace march, and they are, quite frankly, Thugs, people with ties to football hooliganism, the Met have said. And it not only shames the kind of people who are there, it shames our Home Secretary and our government who enticed these people to do the things that they did. Because again, it wasn't about Palestine or Israel. It was about being anti-police and it was about white supremacy. Those were the things that were being talked about here. Now, there's one last thing I would like to point out in this segment today, and that is the response from the media. Incredibly, there's been so many headlines that I've seen that have tried to take the fact that the far right caused huge amounts of violence with an incredibly high attendance to arrest ratio, that the media have seen fit to skew their headlines to imply things as being far more even than they were. The Evening Standard having headlines as thugs arrested by police after pro-Palestinian demonstration with a photo of the demonstration over the top to imply that the arrests were predominantly from the peace march when the vast, vast, vast majority of arrests were indeed from the far right who came to attack the police who came to disrupt our Armistice Day services. It shames our media. It's a damning indictment of our media for this equivocation between a couple of people dressed as Hamas in a crowd of half a million people versus an explicitly, explicitly violent mob of thugs who came to cause clashes and cause violence. Both equivocation from Sunak and from Braverman and from right-wing elements of our politicians to huge swathes of our media class Hate, intolerance and arrest as thugs hijack Armistice Day. At least the Sunday Times has a picture of the actual thugs, unlike places like the Standard and the Mail, who've made their articles with Palestinian protesters as their main focus in terms of photos to try and trick people into thinking that this was because of the, the peace march and not because of the far right that came out explicitly to cause a fight. It's revolting, but I can't say that I'm surprised. 
Well, I'd like to finish off by saying I'm proud of the people who came out to march today. I'm proud of all the people who I marched alongside. And I'm proud to say that this country, this capital, can overcome hate, it can overcome division, and it can distance itself from our politicians, our media, and this tiny minority of thugs that turned up to disrupt the important ceremony that is our remembrance of the people who lost their lives in World War One, and to celebrate the armistice that followed, and to celebrate peace movements ever since and the world over. I'll see you on the next one.